All right. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Sage Pacheco. I'm the Marketing and Customer Experience Specialist here at WiseCon. Thank you, everyone, for tuning in for our webinar series today featuring Swan Systems. This is one of our latest integrators, so we're really happy to have them on today. On behalf of SWAN, we have Val King. He is the Director of Business Development there at SWAN. So we're going to go over a couple of brief interviews, first starting with an overview of WiseCon and what we offer here. And then we will go ahead and transition over to have Val on to talk about an overview of SWAN and their capabilities. And he will also be giving us a brief demo of their software platform. There will also be a brief Q&A right after the webinar, so we will have about 10 to 15 minutes to go over some questions. So please feel free throughout the webinar if you do come up with any questions or comments, go ahead and drop them in the Q&A box down below your screen, and we will get to them directly after the webinar. This will also be recorded and the link will be sent following the webinar so you can see it on uh, through the link or through our YouTube channels or social channels as well. All right, so going into a brief introduction about WiseCon and what we do and what we specialize in. So WiseCon is a high-tech irrigation management company. We were founded in 2006 in Chile, so we are a Chilean-based company, and we have been in California ever since 2015 here in Fresno. We are currently serving over 310,000 acres with over 14,000 nodes currently deployed in the field all across the world in multiple countries. We are a dealer-based network here at WiseCon, so we work through about 60 distributor companies, 41 of those just being in California alone. We have distributors throughout California, as mentioned. We also work in the Pacific Northwest region as well as the Southeast region. We are currently present in 11 countries across the world, so we are definitely growing rapidly. We have a fully staffed support team here in Fresno, as well as a fully staffed warehouse. We have 12 integrated companies such as Swan, as mentioned, they're one of our latest. So we are continuing to grow with our integrations. We also have an open API protocol. So that mean, meaning that we can connect to other companies, other sensors in the field that also have that open API. Um, we do this to better serve our growers and customers that wanna work with other sensors or other companies and have maybe one login on one platform or just distribute data throughout multiple platforms. So we do offer that. So getting into what we offer here at WiseCon. So as mentioned, we are an online irrigation management system. Our product is called Drop Control. So Drop Control is a reliable irrigation monitoring and control system. We pride ourselves in being the forefront of the automation industry. Automation irrigation is what we specialize in. It's kind of our bread and butter. However, we also have our hand in many other uh, telemetry aspects. So here's kind of our key image on the screen in describing what drop control is and how it works in the field. We have three different types of field units, AKA nodes as what we call them, which I will get to in just a minute. All those nodes talk to each other in the field, receive commands and report back to the one gateway or central node on the field. That data or information is then sent up to the cloud and saved forever for users to be able to access and monitor in prior and history. Here is a brief list of our capabilities that we offer and specialize in. So of course, remote cloud scheduling, local control as well in the field, pump start stop, wireless valve control, remote fertigation scheduling, irrigation monitoring as far as flow, pressure, other sensors in the field, soil moisture monitoring, reservoir well control monitoring, weather monitoring, acid injection, pH control, plant sensor monitoring and NDVI analysis is one of our latest capabilities. So we are a fully fledged um, machine over here. So we offer a couple different forms of platforms for our software system. We offer the web-based platform on the desktop or laptop or whatever you may have. And then we also have a fully integrated mobile app available for Apple or Android. So if you're ever out of the office, in the office, at home, on vacation, you're able to turn your pumps on, off, schedule irrigations, open valves, monitor any sensor you have in the field, all from a device. So it's completely remote monitor capable. As mentioned, we are comprised of hardware and software that we manufacture here at WiseCon. 
getting into some of the hardware. As mentioned, we have those infield nodes as what we call them, and we have three different ones. So going into our flagship node, it's gonna be the green node on the far right hand side. That is our X1. This is a full monitoring and control node. So it can monitor any sensor in the field as well as control any um, field unit um, all within the same node. On the left, we have the orange node called the M1. This is our sole monitoring unit. So if you have soil moisture probes, weather stations, pretty much any sensor you have out there in the field that's compatible, we can monitor that sensor just running off this M1 node. And then finally, we have the C1. So this is our pump filter station control node there in the middle. The C1 can start and stop five different pumps and 10 different valves, as well as fertilizer pumps or acid injection. And the C1 is now capable of filter flushing remotely from a device or locally using a screen that you can purchase for retrofitting on the C1 node. Moving into our software, as mentioned before, you can control or manage anything from a mobile device. Um, if you're scheduling an irrigation, you can do so on your device. It goes through Amazon Web Services all to the WiseCon server, and then it goes to the gateway. Then those commands get sent to the radio nodes in the field. This can also be done through a third-party platform, such as Swan or other platforms we may have spoken about in the past that we're integrated with. You can schedule through other companies' platform, and then our hardware will actually execute it in the field. Here is something similar that you would see when logging on to your drop control platform on a desktop. So a map is created using a KMZ file on Google Earth with the coordinates of your ranch. Um, we then place the location of each node in the field, which are those white circles on the map that you may see. And that will tell you all information tied into that node, sensors, what they're capable of, battery level signal, all that information you can see directly on the software. For scheduling options, so like I mentioned, kind of what we specialize in is that remote irrigation scheduling. There are a few different ways to do that. You can do zone or a block irrigation one at a time. Immediate irrigation, so immediately kick a pump on or off. Group irrigation, so you can schedule multiple blocks, multiple sets, what have you, all at one time. And then we also offer programs and templates, which is great if you're running the same set, let's say for a week or multiple days, up to a month. So if you want to continue running those templates and just change the dates, you're able to do that. Operational feedback is great. So you can actually see what's happening in the field. So you can see we have two different uh, vertical bars here on our 24-hour daily Gantt chart. We have the top bar that is showing us what was scheduled using the drop control platform. And then we have the horizontal bar just below it showing us what actually happened in the field. So you're able to cross-check what's actually happening without you physically having to be there. API recommendations, so this is going to show us our weekly chart on the drop control platform, but with API recommendations overlaid. So here you're able to see the pink boxes are irrigation sets that another API, such as maybe Swan or other companies that we work with, have proposed to the grower. And the bar just below it or the box below it is what the grower accepted and what actually happened out there in the field. And then you can see how differently it would look when the grower was actually just implementing that schedule themselves. You're going to see those two blue bars or boxes on top of each other. So you can kind of see the difference when it's API proposed or just proposed by the grower themselves. Weekly view is great to keep everyone in the loop on your operation. So you can print out a weekly schedule, what's planned or what maybe has happened in the past and implement that in your operation on a weekly basis. Getting into some monitoring capabilities, this is our soil mo monitoring tab. So we're able to see soil moisture, temperature, salinity, pH, EC, all on the monitoring tab on drop control. And you're able to view this historically as well. Weather monitoring, so another telemetry option we have on drop control, we're seeing temperature, humidity, minimum, maximum temps, and then you can see um, data or monitoring uh, data from any sensor you may have in the field at a weather station. Irrigation monitoring is one of our most used or most um, kind of referred back to. So we can see water applications, pressure readings at the valve or at the pump. We can see flow meter readings. Again, any irrigation sensor you may have that we're capable to tie into, you're able to see on drop control. 
flow meter readings. So here we're seeing kind of like a cross check chart. So we're seeing weekly accumulated volume from one block. And then we're also seeing accumulated volume. And then we are also seeing flow readings in the green bar. So you can see how your flow is cross checking with your accumulated volume in the field. Per valve pressure. So here we're seeing pressure readings from three different valves. Well in reservoir monitoring. So here we're seeing a couple of weeks readings of level from a reservoir. Again, just another telemetry unit that we can monitor on drop control with the correct sensors. Here's a couple instances when growers utilize drop control to reduce water, labor, energy, et cetera. So this grower specifically changed from irrigating uh, once a week to twice a day, and they saved 15% in water. And they also gained 3,000 pounds per acre on average without any irrigator on site, without any ponding or water runoffs. And they increased their production by 38% on an off year just by switching up the way they were irrigating, which would be nearly impossible with having an actual irrigator on site able, able to turn on those off those pumps or open those valves. Another instance was a grower using sequential valve control. So they were opening multiple different valves and closing multiple different valves at the same time. So they're able to schedule valves to turn on and off within seconds of each other. Here is a list of our API integrations. As mentioned, we are big on API integrations and working with other companies um, in order to better support our growers that wish to work with these companies. So as, as you can see, Swan Systems is up there. They're one of our newly integrated companies and we're very excited to have them and hear about what they have to offer for our customers. That is my information. If you wanna jot that down, if you have any questions regarding drop control, WiseCon in general, or how to reach out to a uh, territory manager in your area, or just any questions in general, feel free to reach out to me. And I am now going to introduce Val. So as mentioned, Val King is the uh, latest employee of Swan Systems. He's director of business development and he is going to share a bit about SWAN, what they specialize in, and then give us a brief demo on their platform. So I'm going to go ahead and invite Val to share his screen with you. Hello everyone, Val King here from SWAN Systems. Let me share a quick presentation. We'll take you through the SWAN platform. All right, Swan Systems, we're a software water and nutrient management platform. The company's based in Australia. What's important to note about Australia is the water and labor challenges that we're having in California today, Australia faced uh, about 20 years ago. Uh, so they've solved a lot of the problems already that we're seeing. And in fact, a lot of the, a lot of the uh, vineyards and orchards over there have been completely automated for quite some time. Uh, we recently established a footprint here in California. Uh, we have offices in Fresno, San Diego, and Santa Rosa, and there's four of us on our California team. So our software includes support. Um, support uh, involves the actual setup of the, uh, the fields of the farm operations, and then weekly or every other week, we're doing some sort of check-in. Um, we're going to talk about irrigation and nutrient management. The big news that we have today is that we have the ability to create schedules and send those back into the WiseCon system for execution, as Sage had shown earlier. So in many ways, SWAN bridges the gap between agronomy and automation. We bring a lot of agronomic capabilities into our software that can be at your fingertips and able to help you. We calculate soil moisture uh, in the, uh, on a daily basis, and we do a rolling projection of soil moisture. Uh, this is a, a climatic model, and um, like I said, very accurate, and then we can use in-field sensor soil moisture sensors to overlay and use that as a ground truth into the data that we're calculating. We also do a rolling seven-day um, uh, ET, um, based crop demand. 
And we can do that based on local weather resource, local sim station, in-field um, in weather station, or other ET devices. Um, Labor-saving scheduling tools, we have the ability to, um, to do system-suggested uh, irrigation, where the system can actually decide the best grouping of blocks or zones. Uh, and we'll talk more about how we can configure that for, uh, for labor savings. We also have a nutrient management capability. So we have a range of nutrients in a library. Those can be fig configured and change tank mixes and also working with uh, vendors to be able to deliver that uh, nutrient plan, that nutrient schedule to our fertigation skip. So uh, here's a screenshot of what we really wanted to talk about today, which is our system suggested irrigation. And here I'm gonna stop sharing for a minute and I'll jump into an actual demonstration. Okay, here is a, uh, here's a uh, several, uh, uh, three blocks of pistachios and almonds. So if we go over here to our irrigation plan, at a glance, we can see over here that we have um, different statuses, rolling status on the soil moisture balance. I can click into one of these. And then there's the various valves. We can schedule in inches per day, hours and minutes or percent soil moisture. Um, I can click in and I can see a picture of what is what is the soil moisture balance look like now in recent irrigation events. I can set everything by in groups. I can lock particular valves for spraying or other cultural activities. The other thing is we can associate priorities with different valves, different blocks. So in cases of limited water capacity, limited supply, you can prioritize blocks that will always be watered when some isn't, water isn't available. So then what I can do here is I can hit this optimize button and it gives me a choice on how I want to optimize. And then it will actually optimize how much runtime is needed to maintain the predefined soil moisture balance range that we've decided. And we can go in there and we can see now what, that's, what that looks like in the coming week. With SWAN, if we push this button here, publish, we're actually gonna publish the schedule and send it to the, SWAN, or to the WiseCon controller for execution. We can also print this as a PDF and email or send that over to an irrigator ranch manager and whatnot. So jumping back to my presentation, again, the big news there is that system suggested irrigation, very powerful in the way that it can optimize irrigation and reduce labor uh, on valve sets, valve changes and whatnot. Also included with SWAN is we have uh, imaging and the imaging we use to monitor canopy development, um, temporal variation, monitor uh, disease pressure, um, leaks in the field, uh, dry areas, those type of things. Uh, what's important here is this imaging is, um, is performed daily. Uh, so when you consider, you know, traditional uh, imaging products where uh, Sentinel, for example, where you get an image every 10 days, perhaps on the 10th day, there's cloud cover. So now your images are stretched out longer. Well, that becomes a, a dubious management tool. It becomes difficult to be able to make those kind of differences actionable. So we find the daily imaging is very, very useful in that regard. We also have a concept of site health areas where we can identify a particular area within a block, within the irrigation zone, different soil type, different variety, uh, different challenges that you might have with irrigation. And so those site health areas uh, serve as like a canary in a coal mine where you can give that extra focus. The other thing with SWAN is support is included with this product. So back at SWAN, you have a lot of other eyes that are keeping an eye on things. And if we see something that's not right, we're going to reach out and let you know. Uh, the other thing with, with SWAN is we have uh, a crop library 
and crop coefficients, we have a, a grouping of standard crop coefficients that you can take and modify. And the crop coefficient is a way that you can really nail down, lock down the way you grow, actually lock down corporate IP and make that repeatable year in and year out. Uh, the other thing is that crop coefficients are powerful because I could have one that I'm growing with today and I can run a second one in parallel to model things I might want to try. So I'll have the data on what's actually being done and I'll also have data on uh, things that I might want to try. Um, we can also tie back that canopy development from imaging to the crop coefficient. And then we can start looking at variability uh, between blocks, uh, between farms, and that becomes a very powerful tool for managing larger operations or managing contract growers. Uh, again, the, the software is, um, is supported, includes support. Uh, we have Spanish speaking uh, customer success people. Uh, we have some gravity fed systems where, where irrigators are actually texting us information about flow and application and we can get to the system and get that into our system manually. And again, um, really a tool to lock down corporate I, IP, really document and capture how it is you grow, right? What was great about last year and how can I make that repeatable the next year? Uh, how we do it? Um, well, we do it with collaboration. We're working with, with folks like Wisecon. We, we recognize how important it is to have these integrations and these partnerships to make it better for the customer, easier for the customer. Uh, again, we, we collaborate on how to schedule, how you farm, your nutrition programs, site health areas, and how, how we can help you lock down that note. Uh, the system scales across different types of systems, gravity fed, automation, no automation. Um, we can accommodate in, imperial and metric units. Um, and then again, we have customer support that's, uh, that's part of this. And that's everything I have. Um, our system is quite technical. Um, there's probably a whole hour we could dive in and talk about imaging or crop coefficients. I have technical presentations. If anybody is interested in seeing more of that kind of information, I would be happy to uh, schedule some time with you to do that. And now I would like to uh, turn it back over to uh, Sage so we can uh, entertain some questions. Thank you again. Great, thank you. Okay, I'll go ahead and now open the floor for some Q&A questions. I see we have one already, um, but if we have any others, please feel free to drop them in the Q&A box. I'm gonna go ahead and have uh, Val's contact up just one more time. All right, the one I do have so far is, are the nodes, so I'm assuming this is a Wisecon question, are the nodes solar powered and how many nodes can run in field? So the answer is yes, they are solar powered. Um, so there's no need for batteries or anything like that. Um, when the solar or when the power does go below optimal percentage, usually around below like 80 or something, um, you're able to see that on your drop control platform, like I mentioned. So you're able to either simply just go clean off the solar uh, panel, or if there's a wiring issue, uh, we can get some support out there to help you with that. And then how many nodes can run in field? It kind of depends on what capabilities you want to allow your system to have in the field. So it kind of depends on how many pumps you're running, how many valves you want to automate. Um, each valve can be max distance from a little over a mile away from each other. So depending on where everything's located in the field and you know where you want a solar, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, a soil moisture probe installed, it really just kind of depends on where your system is located. Um, another question is how does SWAN measure soil moisture? So we don't actually measure soil moisture. We calculate soil moisture mathematically. We've got a picture and we set up 
the soil type drainage and other parameters. We have a picture of the irrigation system application rate. We know how much water is entering the system. And then what we can do is if there are soil moisture sensors in the field, we can connect those and plot that data and show that and use that as a true up to the calculation. So you can see the soil moisture kind of estimation without having actual sensors in the field. That's correct. Okay. Um, which satellite provider does SWAN use? So we use Sentinel and Planet. And Planet is our daily imaging, and it's essentially about 3.7 meters by 3.7 meters. Uh, an important word on imaging is that imaging over time will become better and better and better. And the SWAN platform is engineered in such a way as new imaging products uh, come along, we can integrate those into our platform, even if they're uh, imaging from drones or actual flights. Awesome. Another question is the WiseCon system able to monitor variable fre frequency drive hertz? And the answer is yes, we are able to monitor VFDs. Um, another question, are the nodes radio or do they have a modem and do they become their own mesh network? So they do operate within a mesh network um, and they can operate as radio units. Yes. All right, we powered through those. Uh, we'll go ahead and hang out for any other questions anyone may have. Does SWAN use soil variability to predict soil moisture? The, uh, the model that we use is quite complex and it's probably worthy of a, um, probably worthy of a separate conversation. All right, again, uh, up there is Val's uh, contact information, phone number and email. So if you would like or have any more in-depth questions that we didn't quite get to, um, feel free to reach out to him and I'm sure he'd be happy to answer those for you. Again, this webinar was recorded as well as the Q&A. So this will be rendered here pretty soon and then posted up on our YouTube channels and socials. And we will also get the link shared out as well for you to rewatch or share with others that maybe didn't get to join us today. Otherwise, I want to thank you all again for joining us today. Please reach out with any other questions and please look forward to our next webinar. Thank you so much, Val, for, have, for uh, joining us today. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. And, and please do reach out. There's, uh, there's a lot of interesting things happening with automation. I've seen a lot of it. And if you're interested in talking and trading ideas, I'm, I'm available. Awesome. We are happy to be integrated with Swan for sure. Thank you, Sage. Thank you, everyone. All right. Have a good day. Bye-bye.